Have you ever wondered why you dress the way you do or where you pick up your sense of fashion or style? Is it something that you created yourself or is it something that was written in the stars? Well, today's guest, author of Starstruck Style and Cosmically Chic, Greg Pokosnik is here to spill all the tea and tell us a little bit more about astrology, star signs, sun signs, and fashion, how all of them come together and how all of it affects you. I'm your host, Ray Madrano, and welcome to Woo Woo. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Woo Woo. On today's episode, we have guest author Greg Polkosnik, and he has written books like Starstruck Style and Cosmically Chic. Thank you so much for being here, Greg. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm happy to be here. I love that. I see we have the book in the back. That's nice. (laughs) We're we're definitely going to be talking about that today. So you're very much an astrologer. Do you do charts? Do you do clients? I start job doing charts you know i studied astrology i guess i really studied hard when i was maybe 19 or 20 years old i really got into it and again you start doing charts casting charts back then was uh, doing an awful lot of math because we didn't have computers to do it we would get charts um books full of ephemerises and we would have to do a whole bunch of calculations i was good at math so that wasn't really my challenge but um It was a different world and you just couldn't just pop into a website and find out your rising sign and your, uh, and your moon sign immediately. Uh, so once I started doing that, I, you know, I enjoy doing that, but I'm not the kind of person that really does well with one-on-one client, um, interactions because. But you are a trainer though, right? I'm I'm not the kind of person who tells people what they want to hear. (laughs) Okay. okay, We like that. What I think they need to hear. So, so that maybe wasn't my special thing. Um, but I always like fashion at the same time. And I just noticed correspondences between the two things. And eventually it just led me toward this. When I sold my book, the first book, Cosmically Chic, I sold it on the premise that um, every fashion magazine at that point had a horoscope column. The two were intertwined. The big prize in astrology back then was to get a, a fashion magazine horoscope column because it was a good solid income. And uh, so that's kind of who I pitched this book to. And that's why I was able to sell the first one to an A, you know, uh, I, I got an agent. I sold it to a major publisher. My first book was actually in the Andrews McNeil catalog in between a um, book between the Pope and a book by Roger Ebert. So it was pretty, a pretty big deal. Wow. It had a lot of publicity the first time. And uh, you, six, so, but you've also been, you've been published by quite a few fashion magazines, haven't you? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had, uh, I've been in you know, old, older magazines that maybe not be around or may, might not be around anymore, but I was a, the horoscope columnist at Teen Vogue and I was a horoscope columnist for Nylon, uh, Harper's Bazaar online. I did a lot of really neat things. That's really cool. Just did by you... sticking my foot in the door. <laughs> <laughs> did you have like a favorite publication that you liked working with or did you? Oh, like, Nylon. How does that work? Nylon? I know. Yeah, nylon, nice. nylon gave me creative license to do whatever I want and I can be sort of a real goof and, uh, when I'm writing these things and I'm not always particularly serious. This isn't life or death for me. And I don't really talk about, you know, spiritual journey of the soul and things like that. Like some astrologers like to do, I goof around a little bit more. (laughs) Then I put fun (laughs) at myself and fun at astrology. So nylon was the place to be for that. They really let me do some fun things, but uh, then I got a contract at another magazine left there. And I kind of wish that I never had, I'd still be doing it today if I had the choice. Yeah, and that would be, I know. And and it's really sad to see like how magazine publications have changed so much. Um, For me being a makeup artist and working in the industry, September issue at Vogue was always like the thing, you know, Mm -hmm. the the go-to. And and now, I mean, it's still there. It exists, but it's just not the same as it was 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Like the digital age has kind of changed all of that. And I feel like where it took months to create and curate like a fashion story or an editorial, now you just, it's like content now, you know, it's just flying every day. Somebody's posting something different, 
celebrities are leading the pack, like Kim Kardashian and Beyonce, and their Instagrams are like their, you know, fashion magazines in their own right. And we're going to talk about them too, because I, from my understanding, <laughs> you were quite, you were quite versed with the celebrity. Right. <laughs> well, you know, I did, I, you know, those things sort of follow one another. If you're going to work in this business, you sort of, one thing has to sort of lead into the other, you, and uh, you have to keep up with that. And I've basically been guilty for the last couple of years of not really paying as att much attention as I should, because I have these, I have Mercury and Sagittarius. So I, my, uh, in the third house, so my attention span sort of waxes and wanes and moves from one thing to another. The shiniest object in front of me is usually what I'm focused <laughs> on. One thing that I noticed in your book that I really enjoyed was the tea, like the tea spill. <laughs> like you guys definitely need to check the book out. It's broken up into like signs and like the fashion that kind of goes with that sign. It's, and then it gives like a list of celebrities that are that sign that also share in that fashion, which I think is really cool. But also it was very gritty. Like it was very sassy and super funny. And I just, I felt almost like salacious. Like it was a salacious, fun read, just going through other signs that don't even involve me because I'm a Capricorn. I can be a little like narrow. Me. Yeah. With the focus. And so I really enjoyed reading the other signs and like the, you know, the fashion correlations that kind of go with that. <laughs> the astrological signs with fashion does it go beyond that like beyond air elemental like fire signs do this uh, water signs do this do you see like an overall correlation between each different elemental sign or is it really more specified to the time in which they were born that makes sense like uh, yeah i understand what you mean each sign is going to have sort of its own sort of specific style but there's going to be correspondences between the earth signs for instance earth signs are probably going to be a little more materialistic people that probably maybe would be more inclined to wear labels, things like that to show that off. A water sign, you know, those people are going to be more emotional, probably have different connections to the clothes that they wear for particular reasons that might, you know, not be apparent to you and me. Fire signs, for instance, would be uh, generally more showy, more eager to just be out there and give you, uh, let you know who they are by what they were wearing. And then with air signs, they're probably going to think about it a little more, maybe be a little more Thoughts all about constructing a particular image. Awesome. I love that. And, and that makes total sense. I'm really curious about with astrology versus psychic mediumship. I know that a lot of people that are just kind of stumbling into or discovering astrology kind of confuse the two or they, they automatically think if you do astrology, you do tarot, or mm -hmm. if you do astrology, you're like a psychic. Can you explain kind of what makes you different? Are you psychic or, or do you just do the math and the charts and the numbers? Like, how does that work for you? Yeah, I believe I just do the math and do the charts, but uh, you know, there's going to be people who have a better idea at, um, you know, maybe a, a, a talent for observation, for bringing things together, for noticing something that a correspondence that occurs across these signs or between these designers that share similar astrological charts. As, and I think I just said I have that sort of brain. I, I order things. It's, I've just got a very orderly mind. So that works for me. I like the other stuff too, but it's just not my thing. I don't think I've ever felt psychic a day in my life. Uh, I do have <laughs> right behind me beside my book there, there's a bowl full of crystals there, but that's, you know, I think I like nice. geology more than I like <laughs> <laughs> like the other I'm a, stuff. Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge I've got a, crystal. I got a tanzanite right here. This is a color change sapphire. I have a whole bougie. Bunch of yeah, <laughs> I love tanzanite. Tanzanite is yeah. um, it's one of my favorite gems. Yeah, it's, this is a cabochon. It's, it's a really neat ring. It's beautiful. <laughs> That's awesome. But around the time of the lockdown, I became very fascinated with rocks and crystals, and I feel like I've always been in a a space to see them and they never really spoke to me. I never vibed with them. And then something shifted around that time and I've become all about them. Like now I go mining, I mine my own crystals. I open a crystal shop on uh, Instagram now is kind of where I'm owning my business endeavors. And so somebody said, you're, you must be an earth sign. I was, I was shopping at something and the way I was interacting with whatever I was buying, somebody said, oh, you must be an earth sign. I said, what does that mean? Because <laughs> I'm an earth sign. Like I like the dirt. Like mm -hmm. I like to play rocks. And she said, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. And 
And she said, I'm willing to bet you're a Capricorn. And I was even more taken aback because usually people can't guess what I am. Like they, whatever people who are brushed up on astrology or star signs, you know, they, they'll guess like five different wrong answers before they guess <laughs> I'm a Capricorn. Does that happen to you? Um, well, you know, right before I changed to do this, I was wearing a shirt that said Capricorn on it. So, you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I give it away. <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, it, it's fun to do that. You know, I worked, uh, I worked at a department store for a while. And there was a really nice menswear store right outside the door. And I was selling something to somebody that worked there. And we started talking about my book and some other stuff that I did. And she asked me to guess her sign. And this is just somebody that you see all the time. And I just sat there and I thought, okay, you're very creative. You do this for a living, probably because you like it, not because it pays really well. Um, you know, then I looked at her hairstyle and some other stuff. I go, you're a Leo. And she goes, yes. <laughs> Sometimes you just hit it right. But honestly, no, there's, there's so many other factors. I'm a Capricorn with a Cancer moon. So that's the opposite sign. I have Libra rising, which is that square to both of those. So, you know, you, you, there's a lot of different things to consider and uh, you can give off a lot of different vibes. I have a third house son and I think that makes me very loquacious and my, one of my big idols is Joan Rivers. I don't really like very many Geminis, but, uh, her, but, um, <laughs> she's such I used to just icon. Love, yeah, I used to just love Joan <laughs> Rivers and, uh, she had, uh, she has a third house son and a third house Mercury like me. And I always talk about that because those sort of things, I think I probably give off those vibes, maybe a little more than just the Capricorn vibe. Although I am a snob and, uh, <laughs> and that, that can gel well with the Capricorns. I know. I we feel met like you because... enjoy the finer things in life. You're giving, yeah, yeah. You're giving me I, that. Yeah. <laughs> I know that we met because um, of your relationship to the Real Housewives of Dallas doing makeup for the app. Oh my gosh. We met on her Twitter page. I are like you a, the Real are Housewives. Are you a big Housewives shows. fan? But if I had to, if I had to pick a housewife who I most resemble in just my outlook in life, it would be Heather DeBrow, my Capricorn sister, because she's the biggest oh. snob on any one of those shows. Oh <laughs> Such a snob and she's so snarky. But you know, yeah. it's like other people take the snark as like um mean spirited. And I'm just direct sometimes. And especially when I I find that the longer I've known someone, the less patience I have for them in any capacity. And so I'm always expecting them to meet me at my level. And so it's just, it, you know, sometimes I, I come across as short with people when I'm just being direct and they're like, oh, why are you such an ass? Or why are you being so sarcastic? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not. It's the truth. Like, come on. Yeah. Just... I, I, I get that too. And I get the resting bitch face thing and I get, RBF, uh, yeah. you know, all that stuff. <laughs> I think, but once people sort of get to know me, um, I, I just don't really put on that much of a pretense, especially for somebody that works in fashion. I think I, I'm pretty authentic, you know, authentically myself. Um, and yeah, you know, that, that should sort of be a Capricorn thing. However, let me just say this about Capricorns. We know better than anybody else how to sort of construct and craft an image that sells. So if there's anybody that could really <clears throat> make it, it would be, it would be us as well. You know, I can do that for other people and, mm -hmm. you know, my job. Uh, yeah. I have a really hard time doing it for myself. Yeah. And especially now that I've been trying to be more uh, present on social media platforms, I am not an in front of the camera guy. I am a behind the scenes guy. Mm. Uh, so many times when we were filming Real Housewives, um, they wanted to include me in scenes or have me be a part of something. And I was so shy and so nervous. And I was like, no, 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 no. And, and honestly, I work in film and television. I think Housewives, I've done, a, I've dabbled in reality shows here and there, but I mostly do scripted television. So I've done like series stuff and I've done, you know, characters, you build the characters, you create the characters, they go and they do a script and then you wash it, wash it off and go home. And in the housewife's world, you know, you're totally, you're not creating a character more as you're enhancing the character because the personality, like the person is who they are, but it was just so different because, you know, on a set, you go in, you touch up, you know, whatever. And so sometimes whenever I would work with Deandra, um, and like in Texas, it gets so hot, right? So five minutes outside the door and she's already melting, you know, and I put every mm -hmm. setting powder, I put every spray, like everything I could possibly do to, to, to hold it in place. And then if I ever try to like go in for a touch up or something like that, the producers never wanted us around. They either wanted us around in the storyline or they didn't want us around fussing over them at all. And they wouldn't really allow that, you know, which is kind of interesting. They did try to maintain like a sense of like reality 
And so they didn't want the girls getting too Erica Jane-ish, if you will. Well, you know what's what's really interesting about what you're saying? So like on the topic of Capricorns, Kyle Richards is a Capricorn. Uh -huh. Richards is one of the only housewives that you'll see who um, will do her own touch-ups and do her own makeup she, and, and, and avoid the other stuff and not travel with a glam squad. So that's kind of interesting. We are probably... Um, a little, a little more control self freakish. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, self I like that better. Yeah. Control, like that control, better. control freakish is, uh, you know, that could be a few signs, but uh, mm -hmm. people sometimes say that about me about control, about being a control freak. Well, I'm pretty good at managing time and understanding how long it takes to do things. And I always think that I've got a better way of, of using time. And that's where I exert control. It's not about having to control every element, it's just about the management of time. And we're associated with time. That's uh, that you know the Greek version. It's Saturn. It's Cronus, like like as in chronology. Oh, yeah, chronological. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the Greek version. So nice. Yeah. So of Saturn, I mean that makes sense. Uh, I'm such a I'm such a stickler for time being on time. However, <laughs> I feel like even if I give myself so much time, it never seems to be enough. You know, and I'm like, no, no, no. I planned this out in my head the night before, and then I still find myself kind of running not behind but just stressing to get you know stuff done and i've also realized about myself and i don't know if this is a capricorn thing or if it has something to do with my sun or moon or you know a different house but uh procrastination i on a professional level in in a workspace i cannot stand procrastinators but personally, and I think the reason why I can't stand them is because personally, I myself perform better under procrastination. Is that a Capricorn really? thing or what's, what's no. the deal with that? <laughs> no, I think we're the anti-procrastinators. So yeah, there's going to be something else in your chart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm ADHD. So I feel like, you know, it feels like I've got like the nervous Nelly overthinker of a year and then the self-sufficient control freak, um, who just spins in a stir because of my ADHD probably what it is yeah. you've, you've all got a lot of different things in your chart and so you, when i'm you when you write a sun sign book like my book here you know you're going to be doing a lot of generalization and you have to tell people all the time it's like you're not going to fit into one thing or the other you with um with the fashion astrology like i say in the forewords to both of my books you know read your rising sign as well because your rising sign is an image that you sort of present to other people your sun should be um, um like the cloth you're made of the cloth, the cloth that you're cut from. And, is your rising uh, sign your birth sign? No, your rising sign has to do with the time of the day that you're born. It was the Got sign it. that was on the horizon at the time you were born. So your sun sign is? Is where the sun was. So today, for instance, the sun is in Pisces. And at, uh, you know, at any time, there's a, uh, every two hours, the, the zodiac turns around the earth and you'll, well, roughly every two hours, depending where you are in the world and what time of year it is, uh, you, there'll mm -hmm. be a sign on the horizon. That's where your, what your rising sign is. And that affects your, out, your outer personality, kind of the way that you, uh, people sometimes refer to it as like a mask that you wear to the world. Some people will have a style that reflects the rising sign far more than their sun sign. Uh, it's my contention that you're probably going to be better off reflecting your sun sign to people. It really is who you are. It's not just a, not just a mask that you put on to, to cope through the, to get through the day. Yeah. I, what do you think about apps like CoStar? Have you used it or done anything like that? Yeah. You know what? I haven't really, because all my astrology friends that have like lots of some street credit, like I'll say, yeah. don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I've just taken their advice. I have some, yeah. uh, like the kind of friends that, uh, you know, uh, lecture on astrology at conferences and travel around. And, and one of my, my old roommate actually writes the horoscopes in the Llewellyn calendar, which is like, oh, the wow. best. you know, that was one of the things when I was first starting astrology, we would buy these Llewellyn uh, date Farmers books, Almanacs. these astrology books <laughs> with all the tables in to, to do our job. And yeah, it's kind of funny because we lived together years ago. I was always into astrology. She was always reading my books. She's really surpassed me as far as training is concerned. She's that kind of person that, again, goes around and lectures and hangs out with real astrologers. Yeah. <laughs> again, I'm a little bit of a snob and I don't always <laughs> <laughs> I love that. connect Good. with people Good in taste. that way. <laughs>
I, I, that that would also make people trust your taste. So that's <laughs> I, one thing that I was cracking up about too when I was dressing today because I wear a lot of black all the time. Mm -hmm. And when I was skimming through my section of your book, it's had like Capricorns wear black, gray, and was a charcoal vest. Yeah, we're char and, yeah, charcoal uh, gray, olive, olive green too, like an olive drab. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, and I'm just cracking up because I thought maybe I'll throw him off. You know, maybe I'll maybe I'll wear some color and you know, just kind of <laughs> like play with it a little bit. But honestly, black is just such a great neutral color. You know. Yeah, you know what? And see, I'm wearing this shirt. I, you can't really see. I guess you can probably see up here. This is sort of like an oil slick. It's a really neat shirt. And I wore this today because I thought it gave Pisces vibes. And so that was my attention. That's really cool. So now I, I know that when we talked earlier, you mentioned that you were not really caring too much about celebrities in the last few years or like. Um, well, I keep up on them, but I just don't focus. <laughs> okay. So too much. So I was going to say, and again, because like, I feel like the digital market has just changed the way we receive information and how everything is coming in. If you had to pick top three celebrities on your list to watch on the red carpet right now, who would those top three celebs be? Oh, I, you know what? The funny thing is I got to do red carpet stuff here on TV for a long time. You know, where we nice. like our Canadian version of the Grammys called the Junos and I got to be the red cor carpet correspondent. Back, uh, when my first book came out, I used to go on these award local TV stations to sort of do the award recaps. I got really bored with red carpet fashion and I haven't been paying attention to it. Every time I see it, I just think this again, I'm, I'm just <laughs> haven't been paying that much attention to it. I just saw a Kate Blanchett, um, photo and I usually like what Kate Blanchett does. Although I just remember this one time she wore this Galliano dress that was like pale yellow with burgundy and the color combination just cut me to the bone. <laughs> it was so terrible, but, <laughs> but, but other people liked it. Anyway, but uh, it's like Kate Blanchett and she's like quite relevant right now. I've actually noticed Michelle Yeoh um, just the last couple of days. Um, so would you say like, so Kate Blanchett's still like a fave and then, oh no, you said Kate Blanchett cut you to the bone. <laughs> Oh, no, no, I just said that one. I just said that one pale yellow and burgundy Galliano dress that she wore years ago just was like that, the color combo. Oh, I just never seen anything like it. I saw a picture of her the other day, like I said, though, on my Facebook memories, and she's wearing this full black gown that was just deconstructed straight up to the neck, no sleeves. And it had uh, sort of like fraying around here, fraying around here, and it sort of just spilled on the floor and frayed out on the floor too with this big turquoise collar. <laughs> and I just thought, wow, this is fantastic. This is all you yeah. need. I'm, I'm pretty much over like any kind of fairy princess, anything right now. Um, I have Saturn in Pisces natally, which means I'm going to undergo my second Saturn return, but it hasn't been there since, uh, 94. And in the mid nineties, you know, if you remember correctly, uh, that this was, uh, Saturn moving to Pisces right before Kurt Cobain died, right? <clears throat> think wow. of grunge and minimalism. So you, we might think of Saturn as a sort of a showier. Um, or sorry, as Pisces is sort of a showier, girlier sign. But the last time Saturn, this practical planet, moved in there, you know, you probably don't want to hear this as a makeup artist, but um, I was managing a restaurant back then, and every 16, 17, and 18-year-old girl that was that was working for me didn't wear a stitch of makeup. for, And it was like three years in a row that this trend went on. The mid-90s were stripped down. I, I, um kind of predicting that we're sort of back there again. You know, there's just... An, like right now, when I see these people on red carpets um, and kind of this constructed look that they have on red carpets, it it just seems so artificial to me. And I'm just so done with it. Now, you know, I mean, I saw a picture of Zendaya the other day. And I mean, she dresses beautifully. She really just looks good all the time. But I always see Zendaya as a construction of her own stylist. I don't know what Zendaya would look like or dress like if she didn't have a stylist. I don't associate anything with her. And that's kind of a strike against her when she's on the red carpet. When I see somebody on the red carpet, I want to kind of see it, the essence of who they are. I don't want to just think that they work with a good stylist. And in some ways, that's why I kind of like Kate Blanchett, because I still sort of get Kate Blanchett out of everything Kate Blanchett does. Yes. And I feel like once you hit a certain caliber of celebrity status, mm -hmm. it's a little bit easier to incorporate yourself into it. Yeah, because yeah. I, I will say one of the harder things would be if you were trying to pull like astrological connection or star sign connection to the personality or the actor, 
is when actors and models get handed stuff or basically they have contracts with fashion houses mm. and they have to wear it. Although you know, this is this is really interesting because this brings me to somebody like Charlize, uh, Charlize Theron, because Charlize Theron del Rio. And I mean, she's just spectacular and she dresses like a Leo in on the red carpet. Um, and she was the face of um, J'adore, right? Which I sort of think of Dior and in my books as a Leo 9 label. And I talk about that because it all just gelled with her. The, the look that she, um, the image that she presented on the red carpet just fit her to a T. And yeah even the brands that she represented, like it all just gelled together. Maybe my ideas were inspired by that, or maybe, you know, they just knew something that I was talking about implicitly on a level that we just didn't understand. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, I did find out that Michelle Yeoh was born on August 6th. So that makes her... Um, She's a Leo. So that Leo. explains that thing that she was wearing with all the stuff on the front did you see that <laughs> that that showy leo's leo should be showy like that so i i, I sort yeah. of expect that from leo. i expect the i expect the drama from a leo so here's a funny story because in 2001 i got hired at harper's bazaar harper's bazaar was undergoing some changes um kate betts was the editor then she sort of came in after um liz Telberis died and um it was kind of a big transition and people weren't really taking well to it. And she, I thought the magazine was beautiful. I thought she, what she was doing was great, but I don't know if it was necessarily resonating with the readers. So then they hired a woman named Glenda Bailey, who I believe still does it to this day, or maybe is just exited recently. And Glenda Bailey came in. Glenda Bailey didn't even know how to use email. And she was really just not in touch with anything. But I remember my editor said um, at one point there, she goes, Oh, Glenda Bailey is so sick of the Kardashians already. Now, fast forward 20 years later, or oh, <laughs> 22 two years later, they're still everywhere. They and never went still away. There. And it was so <laughs> funny. Like Glenda Bailey, I thought, okay, well, this is bad. She doesn't have the right impulses to understand that online is where this, uh, is where we're going with these horoscopes and things like that. So she's going to dismiss the online department and focus on the magazine. But she wasn't only wrong about that, but she was really wrong about the Kardashians. Anyway. <laughs> They um, stuck around. So, so Courtney is a, as an Aries and yeah, I can sort of get that a little bit that she's maybe just a little brattier and a little punkier. <laughs> um, Chloe is a cancer and, and, um, I can sort of see that in, um, the way that she, she's maybe a little harder to contour. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it just yeah. looks more like contour on her face. Yeah. She's got that that uh like I, it just doesn't it's it's not as successful 100 percent. yeah it doesn't work with and i can kind of see that in i can sort of see that in her um kendall's a scorpio like her mom and her mom gives me total scorpio vibes the way she dresses the way she acts everything about her like i really just totally get this like get the scorpio vibes from um um from mom and kim is a libra and i do actually see that in kim I think Kim's most successful looks are always when she wears one color head to toe because she's not tall. You're right. And breaking up her silhouette <laughs> is the one is when she just looks ridiculous because she's, she's not tall. She needs to wear about a six inch heel to sort of give herself the illusion of looking tall and, um, and breaking up the silhouette in any ways just detracts from that. So yeah. I sort of get that from her and Libra is the sign of high maintenance and Kim's high maintenance. <laughs> um, what's the young Kylie? Kylie's a, uh, oh, a Leo. And yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you know, she's like, like a really started, boring Leo to me. And that's not to throw shade. It's just like in a lot of interviews and every time you see it, like even when I've caught the show before she got super successful with her company, uh, she was always just very shy. So it's surprising to me that she's a Leo. Because she just seems not comfortable in the spotlight, but she's making the best of it because she is, you know, is she, who she is and she was born how she was born. Yeah. Yeah. I would look to her sun sign for that, to her sun position to see where it was in her chart, because you can have weaker placements for the sun and it'll let other chart factors sort of shine through. But uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I'm sort of, you know, I'm sort of in the uh, camp that I was tired of them 20 years ago, but they're just never going anywhere. So, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> I know. I've just grown to accept it. <laughs> well, and I think the best part about where we are with media is we have so much control over what enters our brain and our ears and our mind because there's so many options of not watching TV or streaming only stuff from Hulu or streaming, you know, like cable, like and tabloids, they're just not there. For me, I feel like I have to force myself to get educated on what's going on in the world with news. I have to make myself get a stream of information, if that makes sense. Whereas I feel like 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, it was just the norm that you got your information all from one place, i.e. television, you know, or tabloids. And now there's just so many different ways to get information. You can curate and customize what information you get. And I also think that's a little scary because that could be closing off a mind, you know, like people are, are really making these little bubbles and they're almost losing culture from not understanding different perspectives, different views. So I think it's very interesting where we are right now with, with the media and how we can just curate what we really want. Because again, I, you know, I talk about the Kardashians, but I can't remember, I couldn't tell you the last time I saw anything Kardashian related, which is kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm old. I've seen this stuff have to have a go. I, I, I never get shocked or jaded or, but, or shocked by anything because I am jaded. Um, <laughs> yeah, I just, I've seen these things before. Yeah. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, when I was um, probably still in elementary school, maybe junior high, I remember my brother going to an Alice Cooper concert and there was <laughs> like, you know, the people with pickets outside complaining that Alice Cooper was satanic and all those things. Mm -hmm. Stuff, it, same, same thing that happens all well, the time. Well, and I mean, do we remember, we remember Prince with the assless chaps, right? Like, mm -hmm. And that was on a very public performance. And, and, and Prince is a Gemini. So is boy George before him, you know, so you saw, you know, I, w I was in high school when boy George came out and boy George was the coolest thing in the world back then. Still today, we're still having the same conversations about all these people. You know, it's like people, you know, they never, never, ever, ever lose, um, your ability to be surprised by how Americans react to <laughs> i know they're always <laughs> clutching to, to controversy yeah <laughs> they're always clutching our invisible pearls yeah you know? yeah it, it really it, it, it makes it, it makes the rest <laughs> of the world laugh do you believe in past lives and reincarnation and do you think that the signs from your past life affect this one i'm not sure about the signs i i don't know what i believe in i'm a really good gardener and i you know looking into a you know, a daily of when it blooms, like, like the complex patterns and things like that. I said, how can you not believe that there's something in <clears> to <throat> see stuff like that? Right. And, uh, but I'm just not sure. I don't think we're meant. Yeah. To I saw, a <laughs> of, I saw a picture of trees, mm -hmm. uh, from, they were like from the forest floor and it was like, they weren't quite touching, but when you were looking straight up, the way the leaves and branches were moving resembled the structure of lungs. Oh, I've seen and, that too. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, that's so profound, you know, because your yeah. lungs breathe oxygen and yada, yada, and, and the trees create oxygen. And I, my, I was shook with that. Like, well, you know, I astrology is like that. I mean, you're always looking at those connections and you're trying to relate one thing to another. That's kind of how astrology develops is, you know, you, you, you pull all these things in together and you're sort of looking at the macrocosm uh, reflected in the microcosm and vice versa. So yeah, that's something that, uh, that astrologers deal with all the time. I don't have any sort of visions of my past life or anything like that. And I try not to try not to dwell on that stuff too much. Have you ever heard of the term stars? Yes, I've heard. Yeah. I only thought of this question because of the title of your previous book, Cosmically Chic. I started thinking, okay, when I think cosmos, I think like, do you believe in extraterrestrials? And, and do you believe they're living and walking among us in couture? I don't believe that they're living and walking amongst us, but I do believe that, you know, like anything is possible. There's been so many, uh, you're probably not on TikTok, but there have been so many weird sightings of UFOs that are just taking over TikTok right now, which is kind of weird because I'll get on and post crystal stuff and. And like my algorithm's like, oh, we've got a weird guy here. So all of the alien stuff starts popping up on my feed. And I'm like, I didn't ask for this. It's very, very interesting. There have been people flying on airplanes and getting in broad daylight 
weird things flying not too far from the plane. It's kind of creepy. Um, do you have any upcoming projects or like plans to write another book? You know, I'd love to write another book. There's two different sort of competing styles of house division in astrology. I'm a, uh, I am use Placid as house division, okay, which was the popular one when I was trained to be an astrologer. Right now, whole house signs are uh, kind of taking over because of um, social media and people who are popular on Twitter sort of promoting these um, different approaches. But in Placidus, um, in the Placidus system, Saturn just moved into my fifth house just a few days before it moved into Pisces, which mm -hmm. means I'm going to have about three years of um, this focus on my creativity. I was complaining for four or for three years before that, that it was in my fourth house, which is the house that rules over your home and family. And I, you know, that's when I really felt trapped during the pandemic. And that sort of makes sense. Um, when Saturn would be in that part of your chart, Saturn yeah. in the fifth house could inhibit creativity for a lot of people, but because I'm a Capricorn, um, Saturn's, um, something I know how to work with. So I've just been sort of waiting for this time thinking, you know, if there's a time to launch a project, the time is now. So yeah. I've just been mulling through some things in my head about what I could possibly do to, uh, you know, to write another book. I'm not the fastest person with these things because I'm always working for doing full time, doing other things at the same time. It's always a sideline, not a career for me. Um, and, but I mean, I like, I like to do a lot of different things at once and it keeps me from getting bored with any one thing that I'm doing, but, um, I don't know. I just need to sort of start something and see how, where it turns out. Cause that's what, that's, what's worked for me in the past. So you made the correlation between fashion and star signs. Mm -hmm. And is there a correlation between star signs and pets or animals? Have you found one? You know, that's very funny. You know what? Somebody actually, um, like I read a, a horoscope the other day, but it was, it was for Jupiter, Jupiter in the sixth house, because Jupiter is going to move from my sixth house to my seventh house very soon. And Jupiter has an influence of about a year. It takes about a year to go through a house in your, uh, in your chart. And in this horoscope for Jupiter in the sixth house, it said, um, is common for people to adopt pets during this time. And I thought, oh, well, that's strange. It's like people don't really talk about that much, but there's going to be somebody out there that talks about it. I'm just not sure who it is. So um, yeah. I have cats. I have three cats. There's one snoring on the couch a few feet from me right now. Um, I'm surprised you can't hear him. Um, this freeloader that moved into my house, this uh, feral cat that now is the biggest baby in the world. But um, I don't know if there's anything in my chart that particularly says cat owner. Um, I think there's something in my chart that says, you know, so a, a Capricorn with a Cancer moon should be somebody that's sort of naturally parental, maybe not necessarily maternal or paternal, just somebody that's probably, you know, um, a yeah. stern, a stern parent and maybe not the necessarily the emotionally connected parent. And I can kind of see that in myself. And that's maybe why I like cats because <laughs> yeah. they're independent and they're around you. They'll love on you when they're in the mood to do that. But dogs are a little too needy for me. And I could see that <laughs> in my chart. And I could probably see that if I had kids too, that I'd probably be like, oh, not you again. And then <laughs> I would get, I would get stuck with the needy one. Uh, my, my partner is a, uh, he's a water sign. He's a Pisces. So, uh, he's an interesting companion to me because Sometimes I am not, I feel like I'm very connected to my emotions. If that makes sense. But I don't necessarily like to talk about them or express them all the time. Oh, that's yeah. Totally a Capricorn thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but he's like the more needy, <laughs> he's going to hate that I'm talking about this, but like the more needy and whiny he kind of becomes and like craving attention, the more I kind of like wall up and I'm just like, oh, absolutely. No, yeah. This is going for me. Like, that is absolutely the relationship that you should have with a Pisces, with a Pisces okay. individual. Yeah. yeah like, really get funny. on me, don't I, touch me. Yeah. You know, I go to Vegas a few times a year with uh, a couple of Pisces friends of mine and I feel the same <laughs> way with them. So yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting um, relationship, Pisces and Capricorn, because um, you can feel like a crutch to them quite often. But you can see in them a lot of things that you just wish that you had in yourself, like just that, uh, just that depth and that um, ability to, to go off of feelings rather than um, thinking of the most practical way to get through something. 
Yeah, I totally yes. agree with that. Yeah. You would like to do a book, but you're not currently working on one right now. Well, you know what? I've, I've had an idea. and I mean, I've had been mulling this idea for several years now. So you have a couple of planets that can only be within a certain distance from the sun. So Mercury can only be on the sign before your sun sign or the sign after. So as Capricorns, we're going to have Mercury in Sagittarius, Mercury in Capricorn, or Mercury in Aquarius. Venus, same thing, but it can actually go two signs on either side. So as Capricorns, we can have Venus in Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, um, Aquarius, or Pisces. If you actually figure those out, you can only have about 180 different personality types, but there's so <laughs> much between those three planets that are the same. I go to a website yeah. called Astro Theme, and I, it's fun because there's a search tool on there. And you can go on and you can search celebrities. Uh, according to these, um, according to their charts. So if I plug in Mercury in Sagittarius, Cap, uh, Sun in Capricorn, and Venus in Aquarius, I get a list of people who I'm really proud to align myself with. It's very interesting. I've got Justin Trudeau, the Prime Minister of Canada. I've got Ricky Martin. Nice. I've got Wilson Cruz. He's on Star Trek. Uh, LeBron James. Just some really interesting people. Numi Rapace, the actress. People I really oh, yeah, like, and I'm thinking, wow, you know what? We're, there's a lot, some similarities in maybe our, I guess, I, I don't know, this is a loaded word in the U.S. Um, so <laughs> there's similarities in our liberalism. <laughs> and Justin yeah. Trudeau is the head of the Liberal Party of Canada, so that makes sense. I'm in Edmonton, so I'm straight Got north of, uh, of you guys. Um, but uh, there's similarities in the way we've preserved ourselves at our age through exercise mm -hmm. and clean living, things like that, that you just wouldn't find. Like if I had to find these, like look up half a dozen celebrities to find the same things. When I find these people, I'm like, oh my God, look at this club I'm in. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. So I don't know, maybe, I... maybe that'll be the topic of my book. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll use that as a launching pad. It's something nobody else has done. And that's kind of what you need to do. You need to have a hook and you need to talk about it in a way that nobody else has talked about it before. And I'm always glad to talk to somebody like you that appreciates my voice because of course. when you read my book and you said it's, it sort of felt salacious, that's why I got jobs at fashion magazines because there's something about the way that I write that comes off as that guy that's a little tongue in cheek and a little mm -hmm. in the know and a little snobby and just, it, it's a good voice for fashion, I guess. It's a great <laughs> voice actually. And, mm -hmm. and again, like it speaks to your talent because it made me look at something that didn't apply to me, you know? Like yeah. Well, I, that's the best thing, did an, best thing an astrologer could ever hear is that people are just not reading their own sign. They're like, they want to read what I have to say about everybody. That's, that's Absolutely. the greatest And I, greatest I can feedback. also say, I have a book. I don't know if it's visible back there. Like the, you know, the big book of birthdays and the big book of relationships. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's like a staple. It has to be in everybody's library. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, that's one of those things where I've only turned to a book like that depending on the person I was dating, you know, or, you know, it, it was never interesting enough. And I know it always connects you to like, oh, famous people who mm. also share your birthday or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I never, you know, it's like you look at what applies to you and then you, you go away. So I, I think that's where you definitely have talent. Is you just, well, thanks. I really appreciate that because I mean, I have that book too. I think I have the big book of birthdays. I've looked at it for other reasons. Like, you know, like, you know, not just about dating somebody, but like I've looked through it to see what these people are saying about saying about other signs and things like that, just because that's where I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to work. I need to know what other people are saying. But the best astrology books to me have always been books about sun signs related to other stuff. There's a, an author named Sasha Fenton. I believe these books probably came out in the 80s. There's one called Sun Sign, Moon Sign, and one called Sun Sign, Rising Sign. And Sun Sign, Moon Sign was the most hilarious thing because there was a part of the, the Capricorn Sun, Cancer, Moon, and her specific advice was something like try to get down to other people's levels sometimes. And it just killed me because I said, oh, <laughs> there's, there's something I get accused of sometimes. Right now I have a boss at work that just, we're just like oil and water. And I think she thinks that I'm a snob and that I'm a know-it-all and I can be, you know, um, but she doesn't get me. So these come off as characteristics that threaten her. Rather than characteristics yeah. that make me, uh, a, you know, a good manager of people and the thing, and, you know, in, in, in the job that I'm at, I'm, I'm good at it. And she doesn't, uh, it just doesn't gel with her. Like I just give off a vibe that she, that just doesn't resonate with her. 
And so I can understand that. I can understand how people talk to me and think, oh, this guy thinks he's better than me. That's it's it's not, not what I mean. It's just how we <laughs> talk, you know? There's yeah, just there's, just, there's, there's just something no... about him, you know? I uh, articulate, yeah. I have good education, I have a pretty high IQ. If I come off that way, it's just because I do. Just deal with it. <laughs> And, you know, I used to, I definitely used to operate more on that level because I, I can be quite witty and quick. I can figure stuff out very quickly. Patterns, habits, observations, like my, my um, observation is very astute with people, environment, settings. And so that allows me to calculate a bunch of different options, pathways, different things, all very quickly at once. Um, and so sometimes if there's a problem, I, I feel like I'm a natural problem solver. Because if shit's going down, I can come up with a counteractive way to, you know, avert a crisis, so to speak, mm -hmm. very quickly and get it done. And, and sometimes when other people can't do that, they're like, God, I always feel so stupid around you <laughs> because you're always figuring stuff out or there's always, you know, and I'm like, it's, it has nothing to do with you. You know, it's not that you're bad or you're dumb or you're slow. Yeah. I'm just quick. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and I, I sort of understand that because I manage a bunch of kids at the job that I've got and. They love me. They, you know, they have great things to say about me all the time. And, you know, they're, I, I, I run a really great team, but you know, just when you get somebody that's just like oil and water with you, you know, this is a Gemini. My boss is a Gemini and I have two, two threads on my Twitter page about, uh, that sort of make fun of American politics. One's called horrible Gemini's and one's called horrible Capricorns. Because literally, you know, 90% of the horrible people in American <laughs> politics are of one of our sign or that sign. But that's hilarious. It's just like you, Wait, you what just is this? Is this on your website? Or it's where, on Twitter. Where is... It's on my Twitter page. So my Twitter page oh, is go my last that. name, Greg Paul Krasnick. But uh, yeah. the horrible Capricorn's phase includes people like Don Jr. and Eric and uh, Kellyanne mm. Conway. Like, I mean, we're in an awful club if you look at that. Oh, and my the God. Ge the horrible Gemini uh, thread is even worse. It's got um, Trump, Pence, Bill Barr, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, <laughs> That what's that? Uh, the one oh, from no, Tennessee that people call a Gemini. sack of hair, or Martha, Martha, whatever. Uh, you know. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Right. go have a look. <laughs> That's definitely doing that this afternoon. In between, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and making fun, making fun of astrology is is it? it, it it's fun. I have a. Uh, I just um, spent the last week reblogging some stuff that I wrote a couple of years ago about the cliches that define the signs because yeah. everybody thinks of a word. You know, where if you play this word association game, say the name of a sign, a, a certain word comes up for everybody. And so I just went through the ones that I did and was sort of asked for some feedback from the people that read my blog just to just to tell me what what comes to their mind. And, you know, with Capricorn, people think that we're serious. We get that yeah. a lot. So worker, you know, I think. Yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> we, we do because we put the work in, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some you know, it was us. funny. Uh, I so I pulled up my chart to see because I remembered um, my ascending sign um, is Aquarius. Okay, and and so I that's my sun sign, right? Like the ascending so yeah. So do you, can you see where your sun is? Do you see what house your sun is in? Yeah, it's Capricorn. Yeah, no, but um, like the house that it's in. There's going to be a number. Oh, the there. house does it that it's say in. Yeah, does it say what house it's uh, in? Is it in the twelfth or the eleventh? Is it going to show me? I bet it's in the eleventh. Oh, it's 11th. in the 11th, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, okay. So, well, I was going to say the 12th because that would make sense with the fact that you you get along well with Pisces people and you work well with Pisces people. But the 11th, you know, for your profession, the fact that you're working in a, um, well, you've got a podcast, you work in TV, that would make sense too because that's sort of what the 11th house relates to is that, uh, especially social media, you know, that's uh, that's where that connection is. Can you see where your Mercury is? I'd kind of like to know about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, my Mercury is also in Capricorn. Oh, it's in Capricorn as well. I'm mm -hmm. surprised by that because of your, uh, you, the fact that you mentioned the ADHD. So, mm -hmm. cause I would expect that to maybe, uh, be in Sagittarius. That's a more likely, uh, likely, uh, ah. position to uh, indicate the tendency to be distracted by shiny objects and not being able to necessarily focus all the time. Yeah. It's, it's one of those, like, it doesn't happen often. I mean, mm -hmm. like I'm better at managing it now, but, um. Yeah, it, you know, I was medicated on and off, you know, my whole life. And so I've chosen not to be medicated, but I still feel like I'm self-medicating because I, I find that when I drink caffeine, I can focus a little bit better. So I, I drink. Go oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I, I cut it off, like, you know, because now that I'm getting older, 
not quite 40 yet, but I'm getting there. And I definitely noticed that I can't drink coffee or anything caffeinated past a certain hour of the day. So yeah, I got it. And, you know, it also kind of throws me off too, because I see in different countries, uh, especially in Europe, they have coffee with dessert, you know, before they go to bed and <laughs> they sleep just fine. And I'm kind of jealous of that, but yeah, I got to keep my caffeine in the earlier part of the day. My moon and my Venus are both in Scorpio. Okay. Can you tell me what that means? Scorpio moon is, it, it's intense. It's, it makes our again sense to so Scorpio moon and a, um, and a Capricorn sun to be with a Pisces. That sort of makes some sense. Um, you're probably a little, um, a little more, you, there's more emotional depth to you than you probably let on. Um, yeah. can you see what house the moon is in? Does, can you see that from where you're at? Nine. It's in the ninth. I've got a ninth house moon too. That's kind of interesting. So nice. that's not the strongest position for the moon, but maybe that could actually have something to do with the, uh, ADHD and the ability to, to not necessarily focus on one thing, but it's not necessarily, I don't think it's an ability. It's just maybe, I think you probably receive some emotional satisfaction out of having a lot of intellectual curiosity that maybe other people don't. And that just yeah. leads you into different places that, um, oh, totally. that other people might not <laughs> go. Like you mentioned yeah. the thing with all of a sudden in the pandemic, you became into crystals and rocks. I, I kind of did the same thing too just because I was bored at that time and not because it was the mystical thing about crystals. I'm just fascinated that these things have grown in the ground and, totally. uh, you know, I'll go yeah. online and look at uh, how everything is formed and the molecular structure and why this thing is, you know, why a green yeah. diamond forms under certain radioactive conditions that other diamonds don't form. I'm that kind of guy. So, <laughs> you know, it's me interesting. Too. I did the same thing and that was during the pandemic as well. So there's gotta be something there between us because. Uh, we yeah. have that, uh, share that, the ninth house moon placement. Yeah. And, and I totally vibe with that too. That wasn't one thing when I was kind of like avo maybe avoiding from that community. Cause I feel like it's very split. There are people that are super into the woo woo of the crystals and rocks yeah. and stuff. And then there are people that are super into the geology and the science of it. And they rarely meet in the middle, but I'm finding more and more people are enjoying and appreciating both. And, and like you, like I, I, you know, when I discovered that citrine, amethyst, and quartz are all the same thing, I, my mind, you know, I was like, <laughs> what? Whoa. And it, and again, it's all about the radiation and the heat and like how it grows and something that could turn purple or green yeah. or yellow. Yeah. You when know, it's heated could... up or irradiated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fascinating. So yeah. Very fascinating. Yeah. That's so really that's gotta be, that's gonna be something the same. Cause we, we kind of came across that at the same time. That was something that I was doing during the pandemic was, uh, you know, uh, boning up on my geo, uh, geology. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Greg, thank you so much for being here. We're almost out of time. Can you tell the audience where they can find your books currently? Are they on okay. Amazon? Or? Yeah. So yeah, Starstruck Style is on Amazon. Starstruck Style is also the name of my blog. My website address is my name, which is long and Polish. And so it's easier just to type Starstruck Style and hopefully pull up, <laughs> uh, <laughs> pull up references. But my, uh, yeah, my, you can find me on Instagram and you can find me on Facebook and you can find me on Twitter all by just searching my name, Greg Polkosnik. Um, and again, Star Trek style, if you just type that in, you can get directed to my blog and, uh, probably find some other projects like old magazine articles and things that I've written from before. Sometimes people get me to do home horoscopes, things like that. I was doing this stuff 20, 23 years ago. I was writing these things for, uh, yeah. um, you know, layouts for fashion magazines, you know, saying, you know, what purse you should carry for your sign, things like that. People do a lot of that now. I'm really the. I've got another fashion astrologer friend that calls me the OG of fashion astrology. And I really <laughs> am. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the guy that sort of brought this to light 20. I think that makes ago. you an expert. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I'm the yeah. first person to tell you that too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm super glad that you made time to chat with me. And yeah. It's great today. to meet you finally, you know, like I mean, I we know. on social media an awful lot. So it was really you were, fun And to you were so you. kind to send us books. Uh, you sent one for me and DM. Yeah. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much again. And I hope that we can do this again soon because this time flew by. Like I, I always get worried about, well, maybe if we get 30 good minutes and like, I feel like I could still keep talking to you for another hour. That's yeah, well, I could talk all day long. That's my <laughs> third house son, like Joan Rivers. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, we'll have to do it again soon. 
All right. Thank you so much, Greg.